And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is the best, worst Instagram ad. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to keep up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving, personalization options, and exclusive colors on the website. We're going to blank one on Amazon Prime. All right, so for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll notice that it's a little bit of a different studio that I'm working in. Leah and I completely redid my office. We uh, we reorganized everything. We moved everything around and uh, actually liked the new design a lot better. So I have a little more sunshine coming through the window, and that's uh, that's always good. And you've actually probably noticed that on our most recent Instagram photos, they've had some interesting, uh, really nice, vibrant colorization. So that's the result of my new office layout. And actually, you can go watch the video. Uh, it's Leah and Colin Murdy. If you go look up the YouTube channel, Leah does a wonderful behind the scenes kind of video of our life and a vlog. And uh, I think the most recent one is the five hour time lapse of us working on redesigning and re laying out my office, which is a complete nightmare. But found a lot of treasures, including a couple of prototypes that I'd completely forgotten about that uh, that I had fun kind of revisiting. So that was cool. Today, I'm talking about uh, our Instagram and I'm going to be a little candid about it. It's been something I've been working on continuing to evolve over time. And there's been uh, some interesting kind of back and forths on how are we going to do our Instagram and what are we looking for in our Instagram. And I'm going to do a whole topic on kind of the identity crisis that we're, we're working through on Thursday's podcast. But today I'm going to talk about the best worst Instagram ad ever. And there's a reason why it's the best and the worst. So the ad itself started out on Snapchat and when I say it wasn't, it started on Snapchat. I actually took the photo on Snapchat, and it was about 11:30 at night, and I needed to put some content on. And as a joke, I pointed at the camera and I said, "You want to buy a journal?" And I saved the photo in my in my camera roll because I save everything in my camera roll because that's what you do when you might have something that you never know will work. And uh, I get a I get a snap back from my brother, uh, my younger brother, who often is one of our first people to comment on things, and he uh, he said. This is a new marketing technique. And I thought, no, it's not new and it's not really marketing. It was just me kind of creating a little funny thing. And so I decided, well, let's see what happens if I put it on our Instagram story for 24 hours, right? I had five times the number of responses, direct responses to that story than I have for anything. So it was like all of a sudden I'm like, wow, this is getting a lot of traction. And so I posted it on our profile and I decided, you know what, we'll, I'll run it through the normal gambit, right? I'll spend 20, 30 bucks on it a day for two days and see how it does, how it goes. It became our best performing advertisement by click overnight, instantly. And it became our best performing advertisement by a very serious factor. Um, I think we ended up spending in the first week and a half of running it, we spent, I think, on average, it was like seven cents per click, which is absurdly low. Uh, and it was interesting because I spend a lot of time crafting beautiful photos. I work really hard to make sure our photos are really beautiful. And every time I really work hard on a photo and then I put it on our Instagram, it never does well. But then when it's 1130 at night and I snap a random photo, sometimes those become the absolute best advertisements. And I have no idea why. I think it has something to do with people's genuine appreciation for kind of the honest way things look, the kind of the real gritty kind of truthful uh, realism behind it. I think another aspect of it is people's, people's willingness to support what they think is a, a more real, uh, real representation of things. I think we kind of are surrounded by photography and media that seems really fake. And I think people are more inclined to say, yeah, I like that when they see something that's genuine because they want to support that. Could be the algorithm. I, I don't think it is, but it could be the algorithm is somehow showing the more, or I, I should say less filtered, less edited stuff more prevalently. I have no idea if that's the case. Um, I guess it'd be interesting to test that by pre-filtering it and then putting it through Instagram rather than using the Instagram filters or the Instagram options to edit it. That would be... Hmm, who knows? Anyway, um, but that ad, it, that ad has become 
incredibly valuable from a click perspective and I've been very surprised by it. It's continued to do pretty well, although it's tapered off a little bit in its success. It's got a little bit more expensive over time. Not much. Um, and it's actually continued to do pretty well despite, uh, despite everything. And the other thing that I've noticed about it is it's drawn a lot more, um, negative comments, I should say. I, I did not expect that. Uh, Leah thinks it's because it's a direct question. And so when you ask a direct question, the answer can also be no or something hurtful. Um, and there's been some funny things that I thought were really, there was one that was like, uh, the last face you'll see before the roofie kicks in or something funny like that. And I, I, I will say that I've been trying to not take it personally because I mean, at some level it's an advertisement and it's easy to kind of shoot off some hate to someone when you see something, but, um, you know, it's me and it's my face going like this. I, so it's like, how do you not take that personally? But it's whatever it is, you know, you have to kind of let those things go. If someone really wants to comment something negative on Instagram, maybe the problem's them, not you. Um, so I take that for what it's worth, but I would say that my, um, my point to all of you out there is you do not know what advertisement will do well. We spent a ton of money. This was a big mistake we made way back when, a couple of months back when things started to get pretty bad. We spent a ton of money on a marketing, uh, a marketing campaign. And I don't know if it was hubris or no, that probably, I mean, it was, it was definitely ego that played into it. Um, but I thought that we could, we could bring on this outside marketing firm and they would be able to generate all of these amazing videos and amazing photos that would do really well and really spectacularly. And I think it, it, it didn't happen because I didn't realize that people didn't want that. People wanted genuine, people wanted real, you know, people wanted to have an interaction with something that they perceived to be intimate. And I think that the really polished photos that we put on there, while I still want to have them on there and I still like taking beautiful photos, uh, those often don't do as well as, as kind of the ones that I just just fire and forget and send out. Which is puzzling, of course, because everything they teach you in marketing is to do beautiful photos and do really nice things. Uh, and so that's, <laughs> that's a little bit backwards, I should say. Um, and I think it's a perception. I think people are, there's a perception that that's changing out in the, in the sphere of influence for younger, the younger generation, for a lot of the social media and things like that. I think there's a, uh, a, a real, raw, unpolished beauty that people enjoy. And uh, I think our products are beautiful in a lot of different ways, in a lot of variety of ways. So maybe that's, you know, that's something that we can show off in a genuine way and people like that. But back to the point, you don't know what ad is going to be the best one. I don't know what ad is going to work well. I have absolutely no idea. A lot of times I'll post something that I think will do really well and it just, it doesn't. It just stinks. And you have to just keep going. You just have to keep photographing, keep shooting, keep posting, and keep writing. You know, you have to work on writing good captions because that matters too. People don't think it does, but it really does because people want to be inspired by what they read. They want something to matter. And I think the ones that we've really, the ones I've spent a lot of time writing captions for, those ones do pretty well overall. So I definitely think that that's a, that's an inv incredibly valuable thing to do and to work hard at. Um, and, and so for us, I mean, our standard procedure is you post a photo. If it does marginally well, if it does pretty decently, we'll then we'll immediately promote it and we'll see how it does when it's promoted. And even some things that have done really well organically haven't done well as advertisements. So even that matters a little bit, right? You may have a photo that your audience, your current audience loves, but the second it goes broader than that, people are like less interested. Regardless, whatever the case may be, I'm going to continue to run that ad for a little bit longer because it keeps doing well. Um, and I'm not going to get hung up on the negative comments that continue to have been spurned by it because what good does that do me? And I'm going to let the natural the natural efforts of photographing that just happen, I want them, I'm going to continue to let them flourish. I'm going to continue to foster them. And I'm going to continue to try and experiment because that's all I can do. That's all anybody can do. And that's all that we can really ever hope for, right? So we'll just keep experimenting. And that's fun, right? You want the challenge. You want it to be difficult. If it wasn't difficult, it wouldn't be a good time. So take that for what it's worth. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in on Thursday for our next topic. I'm going to discuss a little bit more about some of the identity crisis that we're facing as a company and what do we really want to be telling people? What do we want them to, to think of us? How do we want to showcase that? And uh, it kind of ties into this one. So 
um, I think you'll really enjoy it if you like this one. Don't forget to check that subscribe button below to be sure to get the latest podcast right away. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, please feel free to contact us on the main page of our website at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can contact us via Instagram and Facebook. I'll, you can text, email, call, direct message, all the usuals. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. But I do appreciate your patience. That being said, if you want to reach out to me really quickly, Twitter and Snapchat actually have become the best way to get a hold of me in a hurry. And the reason why is because not very many people talk to me on Snapchat and Twitter. So you can get access to me in a much, much quicker way. Check us out on Snapchat and Twitter, Murdy Creative Co. No dot, just Murdy Creative Co. Um, and uh, also, if you're looking for multiple binders for gifts, giveaways, man, you really need to ask about our bulk discounts we do have available. I did forget... If you haven't left us a review already, both on the podcast with whatever you're listening on or on Facebook under the Murdy Creative Co. page, go check us out. If you go to the Murdy Creative Co. page on Facebook, there is a reviews section. If you click on that, there's going to be a thing on the left that says, do you recommend the Murdy Creative Co.? And you can click yes or no. And if you click yes, it'll give you an opportunity to write. And if you click no, it'll give you an opportunity to write. So don't click no, click yes. And then write us a nice review. That does help. That really conveys to a lot of people that what we're doing is good and uh, it means a lot to me as well because we probably don't put them all over the wall. So um, thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day.